so on today's lesson, we were talking about, uh, we're starting chapter four. So we're in section one, using graphs to relate two quantities. Um, so I'm just going to jump right on in because I know that this isn't really new to you. Um, example one, we're analyzing a graph. So the graph shows the volume of air in a balloon as you blow it up until it pops. So we're going to answer the questions. What are the variables? And describe how the variables are related at various points on the graph. So my variables, right there it is, um, are volume and time. Those are my variables. Volume and time, because that's what my graphs are labeled. Remember, labels are very important. Um, and then as we look at this graph, like for here, this first line, we're seeing like a constant inflation. So uh, the volume, and, and it's a constant increase, right? So the volume increases. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, I didn't want to cough in the microphone. And the volume increases each time each time someone blows. Or with each breath. Um, and then it stays constant as we take a breath. So here we were blowing, and then about here we take a breath. And so for that time of taking a breath, it's a constant. So volume increases each time you blow. And my tablet's being a pain, uh, and stays constant. when taking a breath. And that just keeps going for a while. And then after what? Here's one breath, two breath. After the third breath, starting into that fourth blow, our volume drops off immediately. And so I would assume but that's when the balloon pops. So uh, on that fourth blow, the balloon pops. And the volume automatically goes to zero. So volume decreases to zero. And so that's just us describing the graph. Again, we look at the fact that we have volume and time. The volume increases as we, we blow into the balloon. It's constant as we take a breath and then it increases until it pops and it immediately goes down to a volume of zero. So that's how we analyze a graph. So here is another one. Uh, what are the variables uh, in each graph and describe how the variables are related at various points on the graph. So our variables are length and time. And with this one, the the length is constant until we make a cut, and it's going to be an instantaneous cut. So, um, so our again, we would say length is constant and oops, not until 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 the board is cut. 
Uh, and that's an instantaneous. Cause, or an instant, because I can't, I'm not going to be able to spell. Uh, instant change in length. And so with each time, the board gets shorter. With each cut. the board gets shorter, which, I mean, common sense tells you that, but it is what it is. So, again, length and time are our variables. Length is constant until the board is cut, and then the instant change is length. Uh, with each cut, the board gets shorter, and so that's our description on how those variables relate. Um, so example three, matching a table and a graph. So we have our table over here about video downloads and day one, two, three, and four, and total downloads made. So a band, a band allowed fans to download its new music vi or new video from its website, and the table shows the total number of downloads after one, two, three, and four days. Which graph could represent the data shown in the table? So here we are um, showing the fact that a table and a graph can show the same data. And so in order to choose, we just have to look at which one matches uh, our information. So as I look at this, I'm going to look at for obvious things. As our days increase, our total downloads increase. So when I'm looking at the following, D is going to be a no-go. Because as the days increase, our downloads are decreasing. And that's not what happened. Um, so then we have to kind of look like at, is it increasing um, constantly? Is it increasing over time and then just peters out? Is it at a rapid increase? So those are things we're asking ourselves. So to know if it is increasing very rapid or you know constantly versus rapidly, you just have to subtract. So I'm going to take 1,100 minus the 346. 1,100. 1,011. Let me read numbers today. Minus 346. And that gives me a difference of 665. And so then I will do that for the 3,455 minus the 1,011. And when I do that, I end up with 2,444. That's not a constant increase. So it can't be this where everything is increasing at the same rate. To know the difference between these two, I'm going to look at the fact that there's a big jump from 3,455 to 10,000. This does not show that big jump from 3,455 to 10,000. So our answer has to be B. Because that matches our data. And so that's what, what we will, or the one we will choose. Because again, it is the one best matching our data. All right, so one more example in this set of notes. In that example is sketching a graph. So we have to look at the different pieces of information. Uh, a model rocket rises quickly and then slows to a stop at its fuel as its fuel burns out. Uh, and then begins to fall quickly until the parachute opens, after which it falls slowly back to the Earth. Sketch a graph that could represent the height of the rocket during its flight. Label each section. So, over here, time is always an 
independent variable. Time is always going to be your x-axis because it's not going to change. Whereas our dependent variable, our height, is dependent on how long it's been. So here we have height, and this is going to be in feet. And then we have time, most likely in seconds, because we are talking about a, a model rocket, so it's not taking a lot of time. So we start at zero, zero. This model rocket is starting at a height of zero. And keep in mind, it rises quickly until it runs out of gas or fuel. So at about here, it stops rising. And then it's going to fall pretty quickly. But then the parachute deploys, and so our descent becomes slower. And so, and I made it a really big graph, but not long enough axis until we reach the ground. And so this is falling slowly. You could probably do it at a much more um, uh, more flat or slightly flatter slope. But as long as it is a different slope than our fall quickly, Right, because here we fell quickly, right here was when the parachute opened. And so, um, and I guess we should always put a title on this. This is a model rocket flight, because we should always give our graph the title. So again, as we went through this, I underlined things that uh, I needed to look at. Um, as you're doing Math Excel, it's probably things you need to be looking for, which one rises quickly and then kind of slows down and then begins to fall quickly um, and then see where the parachute opens and it goes even slower from there. Those are just things to look at because I'm guessing you're more so going to be matching a sketch as opposed to sketching one on your own in Math Excel. So anyway, um, pretty, pretty simple uh, how we go through. Just keep in mind, we're just describing normal things. Quickly, slowly, that type of stuff. So that is it for 4.1 and graphing functions.